So we start off our 2025 State Trial Series with the easiest chapter, Form 4, Chapter 2. Now, even though it's easy, but it's still your basic. So it's a good practice, like, I feel. Now, I feel like this year, Punya Form 4, Chapter 2, State Trials, right? A lot of trial, they ask about paramecium. So, which I think we should take note a bit on this because they quite like to ask paramecium rather than amoeba also anyway. So other than your what organelles, the cell component, yeah. Paramecium, amoeba, study more of it especially paramecium. So we're going to go through a lot of paramecium. You can yeah, use this as revision, actually. The soft copy for these questions are already in the description below, along with other chapters for this year's trials. Lah. So first question, typical kind of organelle question, Keda 2025. So the first question is to ask us to label Golgi apparatus. Now, Golgi apparatus, obviously, is this. I just write here, GA. So Golgi apparatus is like a Y5 shape thing. You see layer, 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 like that. Or also look like Spotify, Punya logo, like that. So some of you might still confuse how to differentiate between Golgi apparatus and smooth ER. Now, smooth endoplasmic reticulum along with rough, they are always, most of the time, right above the nucleus. That's number one. And number two, right, Golgi apparatus, right, each layer, they are not attached to each other, unlike the ER here, which is not shown very clearly, but you can see in your textbook, all they are always attached to each other one. Okay, so yeah, those are the few things you can look at. Next, the answers to label, okay, very typical basic thing. Uh, state the name of component P and Q. P is obviously your chloroplast. Now, chloroplast and mitochondria, very different. Uh. Okay, I'll write first. So for mitochondria, right, inside is a folded membrane like this. But for chloroplast, you will see your stack of telacoid joined to each other like that. So yeah, that's the thing. And uh, another thing they quite to ask, right? See if there are similarities between mitochondria and chloroplast, remember chloroplast and mitochondria, they both have a double membrane, two-layer membrane. Just that for mitochondria, they have an inner folded membrane. If they ask you why is it folded, is to basically increase surface area for cellular respiration. Moving on, Q. This thing easy lah. Vacuum, of course. Big round thingy. P has a pigment found on the telacoid membrane, state the function of the pigment. Now, in chloroplast, there's literally only one pigment, the green color pigment. So that is obviously the chlorophyll. So if chloroplast and chlorophyll, you still don't know, the whole organelle is called chloroplast. Chlorophyll is like the green liquid found inside the chloroplast. So the function, very easy, lah. one mark only. So we can just rewrite this. Lah. It absorbs sunlight to carry out photosynthesis. That's it. Next. Unicellular paramecium here. Now, I find that this year trial quite a lot of questions on unicellular organisms, especially on paramecium. So, which is, I think, a very important thing you should, should know also like, for this year's SPM. So, the answer is to state the role of component S to ensure survival of the protozoa in this habitat. So, paramecium is a type of protozoa. And uh, yeah, this thing, star shaped thingy one, is called the contractile vacuole. In amoeba, also got contractile vacuum, but in amoeba, it's uh, more like a transparent, round structure. Lah. Ah, this one is like a star shape like that. So this one, the only one, one mark, what does it do? It helps, it uh, involves in osmoregulation, means it regulates water. If there's too much water, they expel it, just like our kidney, our bladder like that. So just say, involved in osmoregulation. But let's say if they ask us to explain Hey, let's need one more mask. Explain the process, right? So basically, what does it do here is now, since they live in fresh water, it's hypotonic on the outside. Water will easily diffuse in. So if the water keeps coming, they will burst and die. So this contrary vacuum is like our bladder will keep on contracting to expel water. So let me give you the full explanation here. You can write this. Excess water diffuses into the contractor vacuum. So once it expands until maximum size, it will contract to expel the water to the surrounding. Easy. For amoeba, also the same thing. Then, the next question they ask, the pond inhibited by the protozoa undergoes change in pH value. Now, usually for these unicellular organisms like amoeba, right, they prefer neutral environment. So if the pH changes, it's obviously a non-favorable environment. So let's assume it's acid. Lah. Okay. So describe one role of structure R when facing the condition. So R is the cilia. What does cilia do? We always say it carries out rhythmic beating. One of the functions of this cilia is to help it move. So obviously, if there's pH change over here, the paramecium wants to move away from it. So that's what I'm going to explain. So I would say, cilia beats faster, <laughs> run away, lor. and you can say, and the paramecium moves away 
from the pH of oh, for the chemical substance or oh. chemical substance. Right, easy. Next, KL paper again about paramecium. So very similar thing they're asking. See, they're pointing the two same thing again, cilia and the contractile vacuole. So these two things you should know, lah. Huh? Very commonly asked. So make sure you you study this well. Name organism X. What else? A paramecium. So paramecium and amoeba. Please remember to write the S P dot. You don't need to underline this, lah. I know scientific need to underline, but the underline thing is only for the chapter eight. If they ask what the linear hierarchy system, they want only underline. So just name. Write the name can already. Structure in which the food particles enter into organism X. So state the structure. So where does the food enter from? For paramecium, and amoeba, they have a mouth. So this mouth is called the oral groove. And then explain the function of M. Cilia. So cilia got a few roles. Just now we mentioned it helps it to move. It also can help to sweep food into the oral groove. So you can write that this rhythmic beating, I can say this word, sweeps the food into the oral groove. Oral groove. It's a function. And again, got acid, got pH change, has threatened the habitat of organism X. How organism X reproduce in an environment? Okay, now other than running away from pH change, if the environment is unfavorable, remember reproduction, right? There are two methods. Is when the condition is favorable and non-favorable, they reproduce differently. So now it's not favorable, ma. They don't like acid one. No organisms like acid one. Most organisms hate it. So how they will reproduce? It's through a sexual method called conjugation. Okay, better to say sexually, but don't just say sexually. The main one, the keyword is by conjugation. So conjugation is their type of sexual reproduction, which is when environment is not favorable, they will reproduce like this. If it's favorable, like just like amoeba, they will just one split into two. Remember, this is called binary fission. Organism X is placed in the seawater. How structure and change in seawater? Now, they mainly live in fresh water. So water will keep on going in because hypotonic. Man. But in seawater, it's hypertonic, very salty. So water will escape. So water is escaped, right? Their contractile vacuum won't have excess water in it. So the contractile vacuum, what will happen is it will shrink until the minimum size because there's no excess water. Just like if you don't drink water, your bladder will be small. Understand? But however, for this question, you must explain what is the process it is involved in. So it's also osmol regulation. Now I help to regulate water by not expelling water. So you still have to say it is involved in osmoregulation. So same, it helps to regulate the water. So since there's no water coming in, it doesn't expand, it doesn't contract. So rate of contraction decreases and then the size of N decreases until minimum size. Ah, so you must write this. Just now was expand to maximum size, expel the water, right? Now you will just become very small because there's no water inside. All right. Next, organelles once again, label the chloroplast. Okay, this question a bit not very clear, but you can see oval shape, a lot of round, round thing like that one. Yeah, that's the chloroplast. Mitochondria is obviously this one of inner folded membrane. Sorry, my pen is not very good. Plus, yeah, this is the mitochondria. Uh, label is P. Yeah, sorry, label is P. Nah. State the function of Q. So Q is the vacuole. Vacuole basically just contains what we call a cell sap. Cell sap is at the top of the cell. Mainly there's water and a lot of nutrients like minerals, sugar, uh, amino acid, a lot. Lah. Yeah, just write a few here. Okay. The membrane of vacuum. So, vacuum has a membrane surrounding it. There's a name for it. it sounds like Donner Duck. It's called the Donner Plus. And this membrane, if you ask characteristics, right, just like the plasma membrane, selectively permeable. Next. 1.2. 
shows the condition of plant cells immersed in solution R. So this is actually a chapter three thing, hyper hypotonic, right? So you can see now the plasma being pulled inwards already. So it shrinks the water come out already. So obviously it's hypertonic solution. Solution. Remember the whole thing. Remember that hypo more water, hyper less. Ah, so always high water potential to low water potential. So water comes out, outside is low, it's hyper on the outside. Explain method to restore the cell to normal. So if I want the water to come back inside and then expand to back to normal size, obviously now I got to put in the opposite solution, which is hypotonic. So what will happen? Just now water diffuse out, right? Now water diffuse in by osmosis. So water, don't forget, right? Molecules diffuses into plant cell, of course, by osmosis. Moving on, para again, unicellular organisms again, paramecium. Now this is actually a form five chapter eight. So for form fours watching this, uh, yeah, you learn this in form five. So state the kingdom of paramecium. So paramecium is under which which kingdom? Uh, it's not bacteria. It's called protista, amoeba, and paramecium. They belong to this group of weird unicellular organisms called protista. Okay. So state one other organisms that's in the same kingdom. So the easiest one, amoeba. Lah. Don't forget to write espidot. Other than the amoeba, you also can say those kind of what you learn in formula, what clamidominus, algae, and many, many more. Lah. Explain how J helps in the feeding of organism. So J, again, the cilia, you can see the cilia and contractile vacuum is one of the most asked parts of the paramecium, once again. So uh, they ask in feeding, which you say already, beating, sweep. So exactly same answer like just now. I just the copy from just now. Paste here. So really mean beating of cilia, sweep food particle into the oral growth. That's your two marks. So simple. Both K structures were damaged when exposed to a type of chemical. Of K. Again, starship, control of vacuum. Explain the effect to the paramecium. So basically, they live in fresh water. Now water will keep on coming in and they cannot expel water. So basically you can see the process first. Osmol regulation cannot occur. Excess water cannot be expelled. Look. Osmol regulation obviously cannot occur. Why? It's because excess water cannot be expelled. If excess water cannot be expelled, you can say it will burst. And then if you open your favorite word, it will die. So the paramecium as dot you burst and that Ta -da, like that so you must take the main process first osmo regulation cannot occur so if this cannot occur they will then burst and die because water cannot be expelled once again we have another paramecium question uh which i think i will skip this early you can try yourself same thing again so i, do, I don't do the same thing over and over again it's like almost the same so there's one amoeba here they're asking so you can see amoeba somehow not really a very favorable question but we still need to know so you can show see them here showing you a type of life process which is obviously their reproduction called the binary fission so explain the life process so you can say it is a uh, binary fission so you can say the amoeba sp dot is undergoing binary fission whereby you can say binary fission actually mitosis so you can add that in your explanation three marks ma, uh, whereby it divides by osmosis okay. mitosis and just like paramecium right they will reproduce differently according to condition. For binary fission, both paramecium and amoeba will reproduce through binary fission when the condition is favorable. So you can say it occurs when conditions are favorable. All right, so the main process got to say first. So I explain a bit, say they undergo mitosis to, to divide. And yeah, it's a favorable condition where they reproduce like that. Okay, the final question of chapter two in this year's trial is SPP, which is uh, asking about tissues now, the tissue organization. Now. So they shows two types of actually muscle tissue. Now muscle, there are three types. X is like, you can see like, three branches like that. See, it will branch, branch, branch like that one. That's your heart. Yeah. 
muscle called cardiac muscle. And then this one, you can see the like eyeball shape like that one that is obviously smooth muscle. And you can see the texture of it is also very smooth. Do you have this line, line, line like that to make it rougher the texture? And one more is, of course, your skeletal muscle, which look very similar to cardiac. It looks like this one, like three branches like that one. But the three branches are not like, okay, they look like sticks, not three branches. They are not like branching out like that. You see this one, oh, it's like branch, branch like that one. This one, each of the of the sticks, right, they are not branching out, right? They're just like individual like that one. So that is skeletal. And identify the organ where tissue X can be found. So we already say heart. Ah, uh, muscle is cardiac muscle. So heart, lo. If tissue X are stored in a warm oxygenated solution that contains nutrients, tissue X will contract and relax rhythmically on their own. So for form 4, again, once, you're, once again, if you're watching this, this is actually form 4, chapter 10. So heart muscles, right, they can contract and relax without being controlled by the brain, without stimulation of the brain. So this is called myogenic. Cardiac muscles are myogenic. That is the characteristics. Last, a badminton player carries out intensive training every day to increase the density of mitochondria in his muscle. How the increase of density of mitochondria helps the badminton player during a tournament. So more mitochondria, obviously we know more, more energy. But what is the process that mitochondria carry out? It's cellular respiration. So you must say rates of cellular respiration increases. More respiration, more oxygen oxidized glucose. So therefore more energy is generated. So that's the first part of our 2025 state trial, Form 4, Chapter 2. So I will do more also in the coming days, like Form 4, Chapter 3, Form 4, Chapter 12, Chapter 15, all these important, important chapters, and also a bit more Form 5. So I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.